Oh, yo guys, what is going on? It's your boy Steez, and today I will be starting a new series of videos teaching you guys how to set up your own small scale. And I'm going to be going over several different elements of small scale. I've got six videos lined up in total. And hopefully by the end of the series, you guys will know exactly how to set up your own small scale, exactly how to set up your group, and most importantly, get kills and do well. So I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible. Obviously there is a lot of elements to small scale, so I do want to cover everything. And like I said, I will be splitting this up into six different videos. Now the first video today, I'm going to be talking about group setup. Now that's going to include things like sets what classes you need in your group, what roles, like how many healers, DPS and support you need in your group, and what skills that everyone should be running on the bar. Okay, so the next week's video is going to be about understanding stacking, baiting and luring techniques. Now this might be, you know, a foreign language to you right now in terms of ESO, but, you know, we will get to that next week. Uh, the third video is going to be how to properly coordinate ult drops. Now this is really important if you want to do well. The fourth video is going to be about always being one step ahead in a fight. Now there's several different elements to that video but that was the kind of title I came up with but it doesn't really represent what the video is going to be about. But nonetheless it does have a lot of very useful information in there about how to be one step ahead of your enemies in fights and it's going to give you the upper hand. The fifth video is going to be about staying alive. And you know, kiting and how to not die. Okay. Uh, and the sixth video is going to be about understanding key players. Now there's a lot of key players that we use in small scale that all small scalers use and they work for a reason. So I'm going to be going over them um, in the sixth video. So let's not delay any further, let's jump straight into this week's video and the first video of the series which is how to set up your group. Now group setup is very important. Okay, if you don't get your group set up right, you're not going to do well. Sorry, don't mind me, I'm just drinking my brew. Right, so what should we go over first? I guess, sets. Right, so what sets do you want in your group? Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. And, you know, a lot of you will already know this. But if you don't, this is going to be useful to you. So, I'm going to list a few sets here, okay, not not many, just a few that you are going to want to have in your group, or at least look into. So, Vicious Death, Transmutation, Spell Power Cure, Powerful Assault, Gossamer, Meritorious Service, Scoring's Feast. These are just to name a few sets, okay, there's so many more that you can use in small scale, depending on how you want to set up your group. But if you use these sets, you are going to do well, okay? So there's other things like mythics. Um, the only mythic that really comes to mind as being really, really good in the small scale is snow treaders. Now, snow treaders stop you from getting snared or immobilized, which, when you're in a small scale group trying to stay on ground, is super, super handy, okay? Especially if you've got major and minor expedition in group. It makes getting about and not getting locked down super easy the reason why your set choice is important is because you are going to want to buff everyone in the group not just yourself okay so you are going to want to use sets that buff your friends this is why things like spell power cure and powerful assault make great small scale sets and i guess the main purpose of understanding why and what sets to use is understanding what the sets do to each player in your group. So things like spell power and um, scorians and powerful assault, these are going to buff everyone's damage. Now for a healer, more damage equals more healing. 
for a damage, more damage equals more damage, and you know, on things like supports, the extra damage is going to help with off heals. So Vicious Death is going to be your best friend here for your DPS. This is going to be the Zerg Busting set, and this is what you are going to want to primarily focus on. Since it's going to do a lot of the work for you, you're going to want to definitely consider putting most, if not all, of your DPS in Vicious Death, even your stamina. Okay. Uh, transmutation, this is bread and butter to any kind of healing in PvP. It's going to give you nearly 50% less crit damage or maybe 25 or something like that but that's a lot that is a big mitigation boost to crit damage and it's going to stop you from getting bombed it's going to stop people in your group from getting ganked it's an amazing set i've already touched on spell power and uh, powerful gossamer this is going to give you and your full group major evasion okay which means they don't have to run shuffle they don't have to run all these different skills to get major evasion so it's going to open up a skill spot on everyone's bar and it's going to give you 20% mitigation to all ultimates pretty much you know all hard hitting AOE attacks um, so yeah a massive massive buff okay so I'll talk about Meritorious Meritorious basically just gives you and your group a little bit of an armor buff it's not you know you don't need it in small scale but it is handy to have uh, Scorians as well, same thing, it's going to give you a recovering damage, it's not, you don't need it, but it is basically a magic spell power, uh, sorry, a magic powerful assault, so you do want it in your group if you can fit it in there, you know, so I'm going to leave sets there now, I feel like I don't want to spend too much time talking about sets, um, because at the end of the day, you set up your group how you want to set up your group, I'm not here to tell you how to set it up, Part of the fun is theory crafting and coming up with the best setup for your group. But they were just some of the sets that we use and a lot of small scalers use, so I just thought I'd mention them. Mm. Oh, I love a good brew, you know, boys. So next I want to talk about classes. So, having one of each class is ideal it's going to give the most passive buff spread and to understand that we need to understand what it is that different classes bring to the group so I'm just going to give a quick rundown here Sorcerer, they bring minor prophecy, minor intellect an AoE stun through streak and an AoE silence through negate okay so they bring a fair amount to the group you know the negate is major in cleaning up pushes and yeah, the negate's gonna save your ass. Templar, they offer minor sorcery to the group. A hard hitting AoE synergy through Nova. They offer a purify synergy which can save your ass in many situations. Okay, so you do wanna utilize that. DK, they bring minor maim and in immobilize through talons. They bring major sock and brutality buff to everyone in your group. They give minor brutality to everyone, AoE major defile through their standard, and yeah. Then obviously you get the talons and the standard synergies that your harmony can hit in group. Nightblade bring absolutely nothing to the table other than minor savagery which is only going to help out your echoing bigger heals across the group really, nothing else. Warden, they bring minor toughness, major protection through permafrost, AoE armor buff for everyone in your group, so they can, you know, they don't have to slot their armor buff. And they have access to AoE major defile. Necros, they bring major vulnerability and the grave robber synergy to your group, which are really, really handy in uh, cleaning up some kills. So now you understand what each class brings to the group that might give you a better idea of how you want to serve your group but in an ideal world you're going to have one of each class as that's just going to give you the most passive buff spread so roles how many healers how many dps how many support do i need in my group okay you're probably asking yourself this 
There isn't really a correct answer to this, but the formula that I use and what has always served me well is for every four people in your group, you have one healer. Okay? So if you've got four people, you have one healer. If you have five people, get two healers. You know, anywhere between one and four, one healer. Anywhere between four and eight, two healers. Anywhere between eight and twelve, three healers. Now they don't have to necessarily be all healers. You could have like one healer, one support in a six man or two healers, one support in a twelve man. Or you know, just one support in a four man, whatever. Just depends on who you've got in your group, how big your group is, and yada yada. But generally speaking, in a six man small scale group, I'll run with one healer and one support with four DPS. Just to give you an idea of what you want to be running and how you want to set up. Now, notice you're probably thinking why you're saying support. Support is basically tank, okay? But it's not. Tanking in PvP is different to PvE, so it's it's less tanking, it's more just supporting the group, which is why I call it support. Right, so the last thing I want to touch upon for how to set up your group is skills. Now, what skills you're running is very important because Well, let me just let me just say this. A lot of skills have a selfish and a selfless option. You know? For example, Talons as a damage over time or a minor maim. You're going to want to take the selfless option in every single scenario you can, okay? Um, what else? Uh, Bird of Prey and Deceptive Predator. You, you're going to want to go Deceptive Predator for minor evasion because it's going to give you 10% less AoE damage taken. You're going to probably have minor berserk in your group anyway. So, yeah, always take the selfless option. Skills like Echoing Vigor, Radiate and Regen. You're going to want to stack these across everyone if you can. It's going to offer a lot of healing over time. It's going to be hard to break. Um, certain classes have, have access to group-wide buffs. For example, Warden has the group-wide armor buff. DK has the group-wide damage buff. Um, you know, things like that. You're going to want to have them in your group. Things like Razor Cow Drops for Spin to Wins, it's going to offer major fracture on enemies which is going to make everyone hit harder and slow people down and yada yada. Immobilize skills like Bombard and Talons, Necro Grabby Hands, whatever skill snares and immobilizers use it, it's going to be super handy in stun locking your opponent on the pushes. What else skills wise? Basically anything with a synergy, okay, because if people can hit that synergy and do free damage, it's going to be better off for the group, okay. Synergies are OP, and I'll touch over, you know what, I'll go over it now. You're going to want to run a harmony in your group, at least one. Why? Just because, okay, and um, if you've never run harmony before, in your group or you've never used it try it out bro it slaps in a group I run it on mag and stam DPS even sometimes on healers okay like in a small scale harmony probably the best jewelry trait in my opinion like it's gonna offer free damage free healing free resources everything okay so that's it for skills really guys, I don't really want to spend too much time on this because, you know, I think we're already up to what, 10 minutes? 15 minutes, brother! Okay, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. If you guys enjoyed the information in this video and are interested in seeing the rest of the series, I suggest you change the colour of that subscribe button just below this video. You know, give it a little thumbs up to help a brother out and um, click the bell because then you'll get the notifications for when I release my next video. Now I'll be trying to do this a minimum of one a week, okay? I'll probably get two out a week. But I don't really want to set myself too much work because I have got uni work to do. And 
normal work, you know, to do. So, I'm a busy bee, which is why I haven't been posting much. But, um, yeah, I'll try and get one a week out as a minimum, okay? So, next week's video is going to be about understanding stacking, baiting, and luring techniques. So, once you've got your group set up, you're going to want to know how to stack and bait zergs. And, you know, so you can blow them up. So I'll be going over that next week. Thanks for tuning in guys. You've been amazing. Thanks for sticking around if you've stuck around this long till the end of the video. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.